Hey friends, so today I'll be sharing a story with you on the day I almost went to see a native doctor. Although the story is embarrassing, it taught me a lesson that I'll be very happy to share with you guys. So this was back in 2012. I was in 100 level and at the time I was 16 years old. My school is a private school and it's located in a village. That kind of village where they don't kill pythons. I don't want to name the school, but I think some people will know the name of the school. So I was in my 100 level and we were like five in the room. It's a hostel. We're like five in the room. There were five beds. And I think at the time we also kind of had a guest. We kind of had a guest, some kind, someone squatting because the person came late and did not have accommodation at the time. So he was squatting with his relation there. But the, the guy himself is an indigen, indigen, indigen. Is an indigen, but not of that community where the school is, but of a neighboring one, I guess. So we all just getting to know each other. We had been together for about a few months, probably, I think, not up to a semester. So one night while we were sleeping, our phones were stolen. It wasn't as though we were robbed. Someone had come into the room and had taken our phones while we were sleeping, probably because we kept it under our pillows. We were just so careless and nonchalant about it. But trust me, after that day, we became wiser. So the next morning we woke up, we're looking for our phones. Luckily for us, we saw our SIM cards outside the door of the room, which means the person was kind enough to, you know, leave our SIM cards because let's face it, that is kind of like the most important thing next to the memory card, I guess. <laughs> But we were all frustrated. We we're like, who could have done this? Who did this? No, no, no. We need to report. We need to say something. We need to find these people. You know, it's aggravating. That was when Blackberry was raining really dead. But it wasn't the Blackberry I was using to. But, you know, the rich kids in the room were using Blackberry. So, you know, it was a bigger loss for them. As to me, that was using a Nokia C3. <laughs> While we were trying to figure out how we could find these people and, you know, get our phones back one of my roommates that is the one squatting he was angry he was like saw him closing a lock can he's like he will find them he knows how he will get them he knows what to do he knows how we'll find the people who stole it and i was like curious as to how you're gonna do it because i i also want to find my phone like what are you gonna do he said he knows who to meet and where to go and what to do to find the person who did it he knows the right person to meet and all the person has to do is do some pa 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 incantation and the person will appear in a mirror and i'm like ooh you're going to meet a native doctor wow okay this is cool and i want to i want to join and he's like no i don't need to join that you know it's not my thing. I am an Ajebo. I was like, no, 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 no. I, I want to be among. I want to see this. And I want to see the person who stole my phone in a mirror at a shrine. Who doesn't want to see it? And he started schooling us on how it would be done. That we write the names of all the people we suspect in a piece of paper. Which basically means we write all our names in the room there. Because somehow we're all suspecting ourselves. We'll give it to the native doctor. He will do his incantation. Yada, yada, yada. And the person who stole it will pop up in a mirror. I guess. It was quite fascinating because we only see this kind of things in the movies. So when then I heard how this was going to be done, I was very interested. Like, who wouldn't be interested? I was ready to go. I think we're supposed to travel to another village, but we use a, uh, what do I call it? We would use a motorcycle to go to another village and, you know, do all the things we needed to do. I was ready. I was pumped up. I was already seeing myself in the shrine. I was picturing myself using my back to enter, I was picturing myself pulling my slippers outside, I was picturing myself spitting on a chalk, I was picturing myself being wild, seeing the image of the person appearing in the mirror. You know, I was, you know, that was kind of like what I was hoping to see. However, the guy slowly began to become moody. He slowly began to grow moody and at the point he's like, okay, I think he called me aside and he's like, see, there's something I need to tell you. I'm like, what is it? Like, there's a side effect to this thing. And there's a side effect to this thing we're about to do. And I'm like, okay, uh, what is a side effect? And that was when he revealed to me that if we go there, write our names in a piece of paper, and we're able to find who did this to us, we are automatically signing our souls to the devil. What, what he actually meant was that for us to go through diabolic means to find answers, we are automatically presenting, submitting our likeness, image, spirits into the realm of darkness so that anyone who also wants to find us and attack us would easily find us 
and attack us because now that we've used that means we are now in it and i think it kind of made sense because i've told you guys before that i had a friend who had a diabolic issue and was always being attacked by bullets and all of that and i always never understood why but when you begin to look at the history, you know, he had a diabolic history. People who always knew where to go to solve their problems, where to go to find answers. And it began to make sense because for you to want to add someone on Facebook, for you to want to find someone on Instagram, to send them a message, to poke them, to, you know, DM them, you know, you would also have to register an account too. So that if someone wants to also find you, to add you up, poke you and, you know, chat you up, they will find you. And I think that was kind of like the same situation. He made it clear to us that once we go there, there is no turning back. The moment we go there and find our answers, the moment we leave, our spirit, soul, person, likeness has been registered into the spiritual world. So if someone one day decide that they want to attack me spiritually and they go to their own native doctor, wherever their own native doctor is, they will find me because I have been there before. So my image likeness is stamped and it will be easy for them to throw me the bullet, throw me the calabar belt, you know, just simply attack me spiritually. And when he told me that, it wasn't as if he was trying to discourage me. He just wanted me to know and see if I would still want to continue. And I did not continue because, you know, I refused to be attacked spiritually. Do I, do I really want to submit myself into the realm of darkness because of a Nokia C3? Uh, nobody wants to do that. No, let those with Blackberry do it. It's not Nokia. The rest of you go ahead. I'm good. <laughs> I don't think anybody actually went that day again. I don't know if he went. He probably have been there many times, but I don't remember myself going because I refused to go. But I know he wasn't lying because over time I began to understand these things. I began to see these things. I began to see people who get affected spiritually. I began to learn that they too have also that they too have also been involved in these kinds of practices in the past. Sometimes not with their knowledge because according to the guy, a lot of chief priests, a lot of juju priests, a lot of native doctors don't tell their clients, especially their first time clients. They don't inform them. There are some people who are Christians who just use it once once. You know, they just use it once and say, you know, I'll give my life to Christ. But that doesn't exactly save them because they did not know that what they had done was they had also made themselves available. Although some believers will say that everyone can be attacked spiritually, that is only those who are strong in the spirit that will not be. I can't argue with that, but what I also have learned also is a lot of believers, a lot of Christians per se, who are always claiming to be strong spiritually, who are always fighting spiritual fights, who are always casting and binding demons, who are always seeing cats as someone coming to attack them who when they see a snake they'll think it's someone who sent them those people are usually the ones who unknowingly have been involved in this dark realm because some of them go to their pastors for spiritual guidance and spiritual powers not knowing the source of their pastor's powers they all think it came from god but some pastors as we know get their powers from diabolic means and diabolic sources and their followers don't know that and they go to meet this men of god to protect them to pray for them to see visions for them to see their future to prophesy for them not knowing that this is as good as going to meet a native doctor to tell you who stole your phone thereby you are also registering yourself in that realm of darkness that is why you're always fighting angels and demons that is why a cat is always turning into a human being in your backyard. That is why anytime you're having nightmares, it's always about someone in your village attacking you. That is because your source of spiritual powers is also diabolic. So that is my experience with how I almost went to see a native doctor. And that is what I learned from it. And I hope you have learned something too. Thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I will be doing more content on this particular platform exclusively to YouTube. See you next time.